First here at 5 o'clock, we begin with the gun violence in Portland that has claimed another person's life. Thank you for joining us. I'm Galen Etlin. The latest victim was found near Southeast 136th in Powell, and our Mike Benner spoke with neighbors who have had enough. Late Saturday morning near Southeast 136th in Powell, some red crime tape is all that's left behind from the big police investigation overnight. We hear gunshots all the time. Most definitely. Rebecca Burnett lives just yards from where officers found a person who had been shot. Investigators tell KGW the discovery was made around 1.15 Saturday morning. Despite life-saving efforts by medics, the victim died at the scene. It's just sad that our world is getting so ugly that nobody seems to care about life anymore. Life is just disposable. It's just throwaway. Nobody cares anymore, and it's sad. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of sadness in Portland as of late. Since the start of the year, there have been more than 450 shootings in the Rose City, nearly 30 people killed in that spate of gun violence. That's just insane, and it is so sad. It is so sad. The world has just gotten so ugly. We've been witnesses of like a couple shootings already. Jacqueline Escondon lives just down the street from where officers found that person injured by gunfire early Saturday. She says she and her family are looking at moving out of the neighborhood. But until then, we have um, siblings around and little kids like to play in the neighborhood. We try to keep them in our backyard or in the front yard just to avoid all the uh, the, the mess around. Count that among the many reasons neighbor Rebecca Burnett is hoping for a ceasefire of sorts. I would really wish people would understand that once they shoot that person, it's over. It's no more. Investigators tell us no arrests have been made in this shooting near Southeast 136th and Powell. As always, anyone who has any information should contact the Portland Police Bureau. Reporting in Southeast Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. We know these details are heartbreaking in this city as we see this happen. So today, let's talk about some solutions. A small group gathered to uplift voices of people in the Cully neighborhood who have been victims and survivors of violent crime. The March Against Murder gathered this afternoon at Fresnel Park and walked to Connemoxt Park as part of the demonstration. This has become a citywide movement to unite neighbors and standing against these violent crimes and support peaceful solutions to conflicts. Multnomah County Chair Deborah Kafori was there to support this long healing process too. We know that we can't jail our way out of, out of a gun violence problem. People are hurting right now. Community members are hurting, those who have been impacted by the gun violence. Uh, what we can do is to, is to provide mental health supports. We can provide summer jobs for youth. We can provide after school programs through our SUN programs. And, and we can help people help create places for people to heal. Kafori there said the county is trying to fix the problem on multiple levels. That includes more funding in the district attorney's office as well to get people off the streets and more resources for deputies to get guns off the streets. In Northeast Portland, other demonstrators are making their demands to state leaders take action on Oregon's deadly addiction crisis or resign. The rally in front of the Oregon Health Authority was led by more than 100 impacted Oregonians. Overdoses and death rates continue to climb across the state and country. So people there today want Oregon leaders to enact a 12 step campaign to end the addiction crisis. Some ideas include creating a three year emergency office for addiction recovery, wider distribution of the life saving opioid treatment drug Narcan, more treatment beds and improved access to treatment. An organization helping people rebuild their lives through building skills is celebrating an expansion. Our Tim Gordon has an update about Constructing Hope in Northeast Portland, which will now be able to serve more students in its pre-apprenticeship program. The makeover at Constructing Hope is a big deal for an organization that's been around in some form for nearly 30 years, giving people who otherwise would probably not be given a chance a start learning construction skills. We target African Americans, Native Americans, Asians, and all low-income people. The people who come here for the 10-week program are 100% low-income, predominantly people of color, and most have been incarcerated at some point in their lives. So I see it as an opportunity to truly change lives from one who is low-income to creating generational wealth. With the expansion, Constructing Hope's mission just got bigger, says Executive Director Pat Daniels. This building is going to afford us the opportunity to move from classes of 25 to classes of 45. So it's going to increase the capacity of what we're able to do as far as training low-income people in this community. 
The nonprofit also teaches other work, life, and financial skills and has many success stories. It gave me an opportunity when nobody else would. I mean, a lot of people see somebody with a criminal background and they'll overlook them, but here they actually give you a chance. Jerry Jones is one of them. He owns his own electrical contracting business now after a neighbor advised him to get into the Constructing Hope program over a decade ago. He was a 2009 graduate, and so he, we were just hanging out, and he's like, I think this program would be good for you. So I took a look at it, got in, and it was like the best thing that ever happened to me. Beyond the bigger classrooms, there are other changes. One is beautiful murals meant to inspire. The creations led by an artist whose father was a painter in the construction trade. I fully support this facility and their mission. So here behind me, we have this awesome image that sort of shows the potential journey that these students could take, the various industries that they can enter. In Northeast Portland, Tim Gordon, KGW News. Now in the past five years, Constructing Hope has placed 326 graduates in new careers. And with this expansion, its goal is to go from 75 to 150 graduates per year. Well, today, dozens took advantage of the nice weather to help clean up Forest Park in Portland. There were two separate hikes and four volunteer groups. As they walked, volunteers removed overabundant species like English ivy. Those are invasive. And they do this so that the native species can thrive better. The end result is a better community space that is more accessible for everyone. We have this massive endowment of green spaces that are located within the city and uh, very close to a number of communities. And our goal is to make sure that people know that this is a space for everyone and that they have a hand in making sure that we steward it, that we take care of it, and, uh, and that they feel like this is a place for them. The work from volunteers today also helps with the Forest Park Restoration Program, which improves the overall health of the forest's ecosystem and our region's watershed.